Podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to the ASCM Vendor web Webcast, Moving Your Manufacturing Business from Reactive to Proactive and Finally Predictive with Internet of Things, sponsored by Oracle and Hitachi. My name is Kim Monroe, Marketing Manager at ASCM. Please note that this presentation is being recorded and will be available on the Oracle website and you'll be emailed the location. Before we begin, I'd like to run through a few details. At the end of the presentation, we'll save time for a question and answer session. If you look at the right toolbar on your screen, you'll see a questions box. To ask your question at any time during the presentation, simply type it in the box and click send. Should you experience any technical difficulties during today's broadcast, please call GoToWebinar Tech Support at 1-805-617-7000. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our speakers for today. John Barkas is Vice President responsible for the Oracle Global Manufacturing Industries. This group works globally with customers, partners, and within Oracle to refine industry strategy and build industry solutions that support the industrial manufacturing, automotive, and high-tech industries. John has been with Oracle for over 20 years, eight of which were in consulting, working with customers to manage large global ERP and advanced planning projects. John brings to companies a strong manufacturing supply chain and industry background. His implementation and business experiences help customers to use technology to solve business issues, gain competitive advantage, and to adapt to the rapidly evolving needs of the digital age. Julia Baghdadi is the Director of Product Marketing for the Manufacturing and Maintenance Cloud Applications at Oracle. She's helping customers understand how they can leverage new digital technologies to plan their digital transformation, create value, and evolve to be a market disruptor. Sean Niarora, supply chain solution architect for Hitachi, is an experienced supply chain solution architect and project delivery manager with over 12 years of experience in driving and managing business-led technology enabled supply chain transformations. With a major span of her career focused on Oracle ERP, supply chain implementations, cloud R12, 11i, Shadney currently focuses on architecting supply chain solutions using the new age emerging digital technologies like Internet of Things, blockchain, AI, and RPA, and drive implementations of those solutions to help businesses derive value not seen in the traditional technology world before. And now I'm going to uh, pass the mic over to um, John to begin the presentation. Hey, thank you, Kim. So um, we have a great agenda here today, and I think we have a number of topics we want to cover, and I think uh, you'll find interest. We'll talk a little bit about um, how the world for manufacturing has changed, a little bit about the connected digital enterprise, and then uh, Julie will give you some insight on possible ways to get there, and then Shande will, will talk about a number of industry use cases, and then we'll allow some time at the end from, for some questions and answers. So we look forward to getting moving on this. So the first off, um, we don't really need a seminar to know that the world has changed. For, for manufacturing, there's been a lot of um, changes, but everything that we're doing today is, uh, is really based upon um, the activities that we're engaged with today. So the way we interact with, uh, with our systems is significantly different. We want to have a lot more interaction um, on mobile devices, and we expect information to be a lot faster. So all of that has really changed our overall culture and our expectations has brought that into the businesses that we work with and especially as it relates to manufacturing. And so that because of that, there's some disruptions that are very specific to manufacturing um, that really companies really have to adapt to and understand in order for them to be able to um, take advantage of it and to be able to make the most 
of opportunities in this new age. And so I'll talk through those at a high level right now. Um, first off, um, hyperconnectivity. So just like we're constantly connected to our phones, and now for many of us that might have um, watches or Fitbits or other devices that we have, um, we're constantly connected. Um, and uh, that transition and transformation is really happening over to the manufacturing entities, partly because it's so easy to do. There's a lot more connectivity. Everything has um, a sensors enables it, and it allows us to be able to see um, activities that we couldn't have seen before. So we get information a lot faster than we ever have, and that's really helping us to improve quality efficiencies and really open up a whole realm of new opportunities. So that's the first shift that we're seeing. The second shift is in the, in this, a little bit directly related to this is really the pace of innovation. So just like in our in our home products, you know, our expectations are much more than they ever were in the past of having new devices, new versions. A lot of things have really changed the dynamics to allow things to move faster, and companies really have to react and be able to anticipate to that. One big transformation that's allowed that to occur is this transition from hardware to software. And because of that, um, even once you have a device out in the field or you have some piece of equipment, um, you can actually continually add features and functionality, um, you know, it, um, do that remotely, and a lot of capabilities. So because of that, um, overall innovations happen faster, not only in the products, um, but in the services and in the processes and able to actually deliver upon that. And all of that's really led to um, a couple of things, one of which is um, customer expectations are much higher. And so where uh, in the past they might be willing to accept deliveries that might be late or even be delayed from the time that they had hoped or expected for, um, they might they now want you know very specific um, requirements met, which might mean um, a lot more personalization. Um, they have higher expectations of the transparency, the visibility of any interactions that you have with you. They want it to be a much easier um, capability to be able to work with. In addition to that, um, they actually want um, new business models where maybe they don't want to buy a product at all. They might want to buy a service or a product as a service, and they want or the, uh, be able to purchase based upon particular outcomes. You know, Oracle is really going through this transformation ourselves, where we would sell, you know, on-premise software, and that on-premise software we could sell it and, and basically, you know, wait till later to be able to sell it to you again. And now we have to have an ongoing relationship, whereas we sell um, predominantly most of our software in the cloud today. Um, that relationship's an ongoing activity, and there's a higher expectation for new releases, new versions, you know, new functionality, new capability, and it, it really, you know, changes the dynamics of the relationship because um, as um, you know, customers have new requirements and new needs, we're able to very quickly um, adapt and adjust for those, and so it really improves the experience for the customers and also improves the uh, the capability for suppliers to deliver. In globalization. Um, you know, the global hasn't changed. There's still, there's still a great big you know, world out there, but the, the pace of change is significantly faster. People and companies have to adapt to those changes much quicker than they ever had in the past. And for a company that, you know, is an example, I mean, the things that we're seeing now, you know, around the tariffs or, or potentially around um, activities in um, compliance issues or environmental issues, um, all of those activities that whenever they change, you know, companies have to adapt very quickly um, to be able to make the most of the new opportunities or not get uh, bogged down in any of the challenges associated with that. So a lot of opportunity, but at the same time, companies need to be able to move much faster to adapt to those changes. So these are the major shifts that we're seeing. And in those shifts, it's really driving some additional opportunities. I get this here. And just as evidence of that, you know, first we see um, this whole convergence of IT and OT. A lot more connected devices are already out there. In fact, most you know, equipment, in fact, most devices really now have um, you know, some connectivity already allotted to it, whether or not it's, um, it's used or not is, is the open question. And you know, we can see the sales of collaborative robots are, are growing significantly with you know, like 159% increase from now all the way to, to 2020. Um, IoT spend is growing um, significantly. So these are all areas in that whole convergence um, to be able to bring the IT closer um, to the OT functionality. And then Industry 4.0, a lot more spend on robotics, um, and that's continuing to grow and it's accelerating at a very fast rate. Um, relatively new is this assumption and leveraging of, of digital twins um, to be able to emulate. So most IoT applications now um, are really required to build in a digital twin in there so you can actually leverage this, uh, this real-time information and then emulate um, activities and be able to anticipate into the future um, based upon projections that are um, developed from historical information and um, AI calculations. 
Um, a lot more additive manufacturing. You know, people, are, um, companies are really adapting to that. For a long time, it's been engaged in the um, in the research and development area, and and uh, you know, leveraging um, basically tooling and other areas, and now a lot more production orientation. And then companies are starting to leverage AR and VR, um, some sort of other mixed reality, in order to be able to improve efficiencies, improve quality, um, and be able to um, improve the training time that people have so to engage. Um, smart manufacturing is a big focus. 31% um, of the businesses polled basically have identified that within the next year they'll be implementing um, more intelligent systems. A lot more activity around AI and ML um, is, is growing and expected to grow at an exponential rate. And then this whole data transfer speed is going to make um, things a lot, um, a lot better and easier for people to leverage this large amount of data. And then, as I mentioned earlier, all of this is really enabling these new business models. So all sorts of as-a-service models, um, and a lot of that will be based upon predicting behavior that the customers want to be able to fulfill that behavior um, even before they want to uh, know what they want in some instances on um, this whole on-demand community uh, economy, and then also um, many more manufacturers are providing this product as a service platform. So. Okay, so um, all of that said, you know, now people have to make better, faster decisions. And uh, this was an interesting statistic that was just put out a couple of years ago. 72% of senior executives thought that bad strategic decisions were either about as frequent as good ones or were the prevailing norm in their organization. And a lot of that isn't necessarily because it's bad decision makers. It's more because um, the data um, is either slow to get, it's inefficient, um, or it's siloed, and so you're looking at um, in, you're ma making a decision based upon um, incomplete information, and that's a, a big challenge. So the faster you can get that information, the more the more frequently you get updates on it, the more likely it is that you'll make um, you know, better decisions. You're leveraging that right information. Maybe can you click the next slide? Here we go. So I want to uh, talk a little bit about this digitally connected enterprise. So um, what uh, technology has really enabled um, some capabilities that didn't exist before, um, and uh, it's allowed enterprises to move significantly faster um, than they would have. Let's see quick. There we go. Um, so the digitally connected enterprise. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. Um, there's a, a number of important functions for manufacturing. And um, and uh, and and these are the these are the important functions that really uh, traverse across um, almost any manufacturing entity. Even whether you um, outsource your manufacturing, you do it internal or not, the key is to be able to tie all of these two these pieces of your of your business together. We kind of articulate that as a as a digital thread. Um, and what that really implies is the faster I get information to each of these different entities, um, the more likely I'll have a uh, I'll make better decisions. And what is uh, we're able to leverage is a lot of these newer technologies to be able to make some of those activities happen. So blockchain is an example, ties a lot of the components together, having a common you know, master data management strategy. Um, and then predominantly what we'll focus on a little bit today is around IoT and that ability to be able to build real time information into each of these different groups so we can um, identify the information that's pertinent and necessary and be able to use that across the enterprise. So as an example, if I have an issue out in the field um, with a particular product, um, I would like to as quickly as possible bring that back into my innovation process um, so I can make updates to the to design or to the manufacturing entities of it, bring it into manufacturing so I don't continue to manufacture bad products, update the supply chain so I can um, plan for and anticipate any service parts or any you know, spares or elements that might be required, or even to the sales team so they're aware of it. And now that capability exists where I can bring that information um, immediately, tie it to the rest of the organization, and be able to execute in particular against that. So next slide. So um, what we'll talk a little bit about today is this progression. And that progression really is around initially getting connected. Um, and there's some value associated with getting connected. Just getting connected uh, um, right away, um, I can actually um, start to see um, some benefits associated with doing that. 
um, because it gives me transparency and visibility about what's actually occurring. And then I can take that information, I can leverage it, and I can start to do um, real-time decisions. Um, one of the challenges with all of this data that's out there, um, it was somewhat humanely impossible to be able to leverage it and make the most of it um, in, uh, uh, manually. And so now because we have AI capability, um, we can allow the systems to make some recommendations to be able to execute on information that before was just data itself. Tying that back into the into the enterprise, um, so integrating it was now where I can actually start to get value, where I get outcome-based results, I can automatically execute on particular activities, create a service request, create a maintenance order, do a replenishment. Um, by tying that back into the uh, to the enterprise, I, I get significant benefit. And then finally, um, uh, where, where really the opportunity exists is to us to move into that predictive and pres pre, uh, prescriptive insight, and so I can um, start to anticipate activities and be able to execute on them automatically. So with that, what I'm going to do is um, pass this on to Julie, and Julie is going to talk a little bit about ways um, to get there. Julie? Thanks, John. Hi, everyone. So this is a digitization journey that John described that um, evolves as data and analytics evolve. And the first step in any digitization effort is to gather data. To do that, you need to connect your assets. In uh, many plants, assets are still not connected for data collection. Uh, plant managers walk the floor with a pad and a pen to check the status of their operations. And therefore, they can only be reactive to events. They lack the real-time visibility and the ability to respond quickly to unforeseen events that affect their productivity. So today, manufacturers can leverage the Internet of Things to collect valuable data. Um, Peter Rucker, the management guru, said, uh, you cannot manage what you don't measure. Once manufacturers start measuring and have a good handle on their production activity, they can actually manage it effectively and therefore improve it. Most manufacturing equipment um, today produces a lot of data that could be leveraged for real-time asset monitoring. And um, sensors are already uh, readily available and they're inexpensive and many machines already have this built in. What makes a huge difference today is cloud computing. This is a key enabler which made the whole process of collecting data from assets so much more accessible and easy and inexpensive. In the past, companies would have to buy servers, package the pieces of software together, get the disciplines that require to convey all that data into actionable information. The cloud makes a difference in terms of cost associated, uh, execution speed, and agility. And we're seeing an exponential growth in connected devices with uh, a projection to grow from 20 billion in 2018 to 75 billion by 2025. Many manufacturers now invest in interconnected equipment to create smart factories that John just mentioned, and, and Chantney will talk about this in a few minutes and really collect data that was not possible before. So now we have collected the data, and what we do with this data is what will allow us to create efficiencies and move from a reactive to active management. Once the assets are connected, the next step is to integrate the operational information with the enterprise data into a converged data store to analyze. And this is the contextualization uh, an, uh, analysis. So it's not just data anymore, it's information that I put into context so I understand more about it. But contextualizing data is not easy because you need to bring together huge amounts of data from a variety of sources. Um, this can be structured data, for example, from your ERP and manufacturing system and unstructured data time series data from your IoT uh, devices and create a data model, then analyze it to be able to expose hidden and, and no intuitive anomalies. Then receive real-time updates so that you can make intelligent decisions. Here's an example of what you would expect to see from such a system, okay? So here's a, a we have a gearbox and a motor mount, how you would improve that. In this example, the converged and contextualized data shows the insights 
that were drawn by correlating large number of parameters that went into the assembly of the gearbox. So the inside reads 30.49% uh, of gearboxes failed the noise test, test uh, during that specific period and had the following characteristics or factors. All this information together allows for correlations to occur. And the combination of many parameters led to this failure. So the noise level, for example, came from the quality system. The um, operational data comes from uh, NES. The sensor data tells you the vibration level. Inventory tells you what part failed, you know, that uh, special bolt. Um, procurement tells you who the supplier was. And the ATM system tells you who the operator was, but also can tell you what the training level of that operator was. By looking at this individually, you might have never figured out what is causing the problem because this operator, David Cooper, uh, passed his training, okay? He was great, the supplier was approved and met the requirements. But when we put this together for some reason, the gearbox failed. So now I have an insight from the system that tells me what is wrong and I can be active and do something about it. This enables me to make real-time decisions fast. So previously, siloed data, which would cause bad strategic decisions within this functional area, such as production management, operations, quality, maintenance, procurement, can be standardized. And the result is a streamlined transfer and analysis of data at speeds not possible through human decision-making. And this is why the Enterprise integration that John described with a digitally connected enterprise is necessary. And um, this really represents a major shift in how manufacturing environments operate and allows greater efficiency and utilization of resources that, than previously available. So now the, the value comes from moving from active to being proactive because not only you can automate decision-making on the factory floor, but connect the entire enterprise and implement closed-loop automation to reap higher benefits. Through this tighter integration of all business applications, your resources, the assets, the people, and by utilizing converged data, decisions can be made faster. And this allows for cross-functional responses to events, um, which th this was not possible before because of the operational technology and information technology separation. So this enterprise level view ties formally competitive functional areas into a single entity away from slow, inefficient, and silo data, which is the source of, of bad decisions. So the digital thread facilitates tighter integration and better information exchange. And uh, I can extend this to multiple domains, right? I can extend into my customer um, to identify whether a delivery is going to be delayed, for example, or how a customer is using an equipment which is installed at their site and collect data from usage so that I can be proactive and offer a better service and, and, and increase customer satisfaction. Um, and uh, Changi will give an example of that uh, later, but really here the benefit is how I can change and, and create new streams of revenue and enable new business models that John mentioned, because I can offer new service and increase my customer, customer loyalty. Now, the next level is to move from proactive to predictive management. To do that, you need the system to be able to anticipate future behavior and um, discover hidden relationships among various factors in order to predict the outcome of future events. However, by adding more data from the entire enterprise, quickly gets more complex um, and, and it's very difficult, if not impossible, for humans to keep track and respond to all of this. And for this reason, Artificial intelligence and machine learning have become very popular in predictive models. These technologies can 
seek out hidden patterns and correlations and predict the likelihood of occurrence of, of very critical outcomes such as yield and quality issues um, or predict process deviations to reduce rework and, and scrap. And by anticipating quality issues in real time means not only that you can reduce the cost of quality, but you can produce better quality products faster. Um, you can anticipate when maintenance is required. In uh, large manufacturing facilities, a customer told us that having that insight even one minute earlier before a machine breaks can save millions of dollars. Perhaps the most um, valuable application of the Internet of Things uh, on the factory floor is predictive maintenance, which is uh, the, the ability to use data-driven analytics to optimize capital equipment upkeep. So this provides users with the lead time to intervene fast and minimize losses. In our previous example, this is what pre the predictive insight would look like now. It would drive um, decisions on training the operator, servicing the robot, and putting the orders from the supplier on hold until the issue is resolved. And this artificial intelligence driven insight will help the process engineer to arrive at the decision faster. For companies that are more mature in their digital transformation journey, the next level would be to move from predictive to prescriptive management. Um, prescriptive analytics helped to um, specify a preferred course of action, and it optimizes decisions by efficiently allocating resources or, or finding the most suitable way forward. The, Real-time intelligence that I talked about a minute ago could be used for prediction or prescription. For example, uh, AI could be used to predict when a machine will fail and schedule preventive maintenance of the machinery. But as more data enters the system and through learning, AI could also be used to prescribe an adjustment to the machine in real time based on quality control data. This, I think the, the, the biggest benefit here is accelerating the speed of operations. Everything can be done faster and with less latency. Um, in the consumer side, uh, Google Maps or Waze will prescribe a specific route to, to get you to your destination faster, right? In, in manufacturing, um, some of the questions that manufacturing managers can use prescriptive analytics to help answer would include uh, what order should we prioritize to maintain service levels and optimize profits or how should we balance service levels with production constraints uh, what maintenance should we do to avoid a predicted failure in a machine so the, the key is to enable the organization to consider any number of constraints across the value chain, depending on the situation. And this will result in improving the efficiency of the organization. And there are purpose-built applications that manufacturers can leverage to help them get there faster. From asset monitoring to production, fleet, worker, and service. Uh, imagine being able to automatically generate work orders as soon as a maintenance issue arises. Field service workers can address these problems faster because they're not relying on manually written work orders. Um, so with artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities embedded in these applications, analyzing huge amounts of data becomes automated and enables the user to make better business decisions faster. So having everything connected into a digital thread, um, your, your people, your assets, your processes, your, your technology, brings significant value to the organization. And um, McKinsey quantified this value for manufacturers um, from 30 to 
50% reduction in machine downtime to 10 to 40% reduction in maintenance costs, 45 to 55% increase in productivity due to automation. This means more work can be done at higher quality in less time and at less cost. Um, reduction in cost of quality. Uh, accelerate time to market by up to 50%. So two main areas here. First, you can optimize your business operations and accelerate the speed of operations. Everything can be done faster and with less latency. Um, from identifying and solving problems to anticipating and meeting customer demands. And the second, this by um, amplifi uh, amplify automation, this might be the second most important here because you can do more with less. These areas uh, of impact, th they will impact uh, different organizations in different ways depending on an organization's starting point. And the type of transformation it undertakes. So I think to get the best out of this is start with a vision and a plan, link your aspirations to sources of business value, work out which technologies, which enablers will help you achieve them, and then double down to achieve impact across the enterprise. And uh, with that, I will pass it on to Chadmi to take us through uh, specific uh, industry use cases. Chadmi, it's up to you. Thanks, John and Julia, for those great insights. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, this is Chandni. And for the next few minutes, I want to just talk about some real world industry use cases. At Hitachi, we are focused on harnessing the breadth of Hitachi's industrial IT and OT capabilities to co-create end-to-end digital solutions with our clients that help them innovate faster, maximize efficiency, and realize measurable, sustainable uh, business value. And these upcoming slides are selective representative samples use cases from different industries and geographies where we have leveraged IoT and data intelligence to either solve a client's unique set of existing business problems or to derive efficiency improvements uh, which were not possible through the traditional technology landscape uh, earlier. Kim, if you could... Uh, Move to the next slide for me, yeah. So the first one is a steel processor in the North America region. Uh, and next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So the first one is a steel processor in the North America region, and they really proud themselves in precision processing of flat rolled steel. Uh, the flat rolled steel goes to the automated uncoiling, slitting, and recoiling lines in their plants before it is converted into the size, shape, and form required by their end customers from various sectors like automotive appliances, constructions, etc. And finally, wrapped up, packaged on the automotive turnstile. A detailed assessment of their shop floor business processes and assessment of their IT data, such as the quality records, helped us narrow down three main causes on why their plants were not performing up to their maximum efficiency and why they are not able to achieve the profitability they are supposed to, theoretically. There was, there was quite some amount of scrap happening on the slitting line due to random misallocation of knife in the slitter head. Though said to be an automated facility, manual monitoring was always required on the slitting process to prevent the quality issues and wastage from happening. And also it was a very reactive process, right? Once the misallocation happens and is detected, the line had to be turned down for correction, resulting into unplanned production downtime. Apart from the slitting process, even other process steps and equipments like the uncoiler were affected by unplanned downtimes and inefficient manual process interventions throughout were impacting the quality order fulfillment rate and so overall efficiency of the plant and hence their profitability. 
collecting monitoring and analyzing data from those targeted machines and processes through the appropriate sensors or other equipments like cameras bolted with machine learning algorithms on top to detect anomalies and incorrect patterns help them with three outcomes first predict potential machine failures much in advance so minimize the unplanned downtimes uh, second predict that a machine could cause quality issues such as the slitter equipment in this case third automate processes like inspections uh, like packaging and labeling inspection in this case and minimize manual human interventions or maximize accuracy uh, moreover this iot solution is not a stand alone system in itself uh, as julia was pointing out the benefits of uh, an integrated digital enterprise the machine failure that iot predicts creates an automated maintenance order in their maintenance system the downtime that is known in advance is fed back as the machine or resource availability to their planning system which in turn lets them do better shop floor scheduling and maximize the plant throughput so this manufacturer really integrated their operational systems and it system silos and is able to derive uh, the benefits uh, as listed here resulting into improved quality improved customer relationship high uh, efficiency and high overall uh, profitability uh, next slide please yeah and next one so the next case is from a beverage manufacturer with their bottling plant uh, and this is carefully selected as this is classic example of the fact that all smart initiatives need not be too investment heavy sometimes the simplest of technology investment and identifying the exact pain points in the process to target can solve the biggest of problems so the challenge what this manufacturer was facing is as simple as the wooden pallets they used to group and ship the bottles on were getting lost somewhere in the supply chain the number of pallets that would leave out of the bottling plant were not same number that returns to the plant because of the process inefficiencies it was just not possible to find out at which point really in the supply chain a pallet got lost who was the owner at that point of time and where did it go and yeah pallets as insignificant as uh, they could be can actually result into a 15 million dollar annual revenue loss problem so it was very clear that a solution is needed to track the pallets in the forward and reverse supply chain but then there are millions of pallets do you start putting a gps sensor or cellular tracking device on each of those and keep uh, track of them every second that could be a very investment heavy solution and really not necessary so we spend a lot of time sitting with the business process stakeholders and understanding what the whole process is like and what are the real challenges and it turned out to be more of an ownership problem we realized if through a technology solution we can help them establish ownership of pallets that would target the maximum chunk of the cause uh, of this problem that they are having so we first did a proof of value with them we enabled 100 of these wooden pallets with simple rfid tags and rfid readers were installed at various nodes of the supply chain to be precise wherever the ownership is supposed to change each time a pallet crosses the node and the scan happens that scan and related information is sent instantly to the cloud application and owner is established thereafter till the next scan happens so for example when the pallet crosses the reader installed uh, at the shipping uh, truck site the particular truck driver is the owner and responsible till the next scan happens so this whole iot uh, automated asset tracking solution not only solve the operational problem by increasing visibility and uh, accountability in the supply chain but also presented huge huge opportunity of lot of data analysis and enable smarter decision making for them for example once the pallet is read at the distribution warehouse an auto counter starts counting the number of days the Uh, pallet was last auto scanned and hence help the warehouse management processes to apply different shipping rules to pallets who have crossed 30 days or 60 days or 90 days in the warehouse uh, 
pallet data collected continuously uh, in the cloud uh, presented this manufacturer uh, with analytics opportunities insights like which nodes in the supply chain are more problematic which are the geographies or markets where more thefts are happening drivers from which fleet are more res uh, responsible over others and so on this all is helping them today uh, take smarter intelligent decisions and making their overall supply chain smarter and smarter next uh, slide please thank you and the last one i want to touch upon is an industrial manufacturer in the emea region they manufacture large industrial equipments uh, at their plants and ship to customers in various geographies along with the quality and precision of their products a huge focus area and differentiator for them is their field service and how they simply and efficiently help their customers manage uh, their equipments installed in site uh, on site uh, they they knew about industry 4.0 they knew it has huge impact in their industry manufacturing industry they knew that there is hidden potential of cost and efficiency efficiency improvement that these emerging technologies hold uh, they were already quite tech savvy they had state of the art manufacturing facilities with all, with all sophisticated machinery all top notch it system but they knew they can get smarter they really wanted to take an take up an initiative to make their factory a smart connected factory and these uh, in the right hand side of the slide these are the expected outcomes uh, uh, they had in mind based on the analysis uh, they they had done over their data so how do you really start the first step in this whole journey is really to figure out which machines or which processes on your shop floor are either the cause of problems or hold the scope of efficiency improvement what are the real bottlenecks and what are the exact operating characteristics or machine settings or environmental conditions or operator operator skills uh, you know just relating it to uh, the example that uh, julia described in detail what are those re real condition which produces the best output for this we we collected all the historical it and ot data that they had contextualized the data sets ran machine learning algorithm over over those which helped them narrow down the machines or processes that had to be targeted as the first step the exercise also presented them with insights like a particular machine when operating with vibrations between 23 to 30 megahertz say under environmental condition of 68 degree fahrenheit and 50% related humidity gave the best quality output so they really got intelligence to act upon right actionable intelligence the next step was to really start collecting data from these targeted mach machine start monitoring those operating uh, characteristics analyze that data and en enable predictive maintenance reduce down times very similar uh, to the steel manufacturer case uh, we saw but in addition uh, because they know uh, the right operating conditions for their own products which they are manufacturing they are the uh, maintenance expert they have uh, gone a level ahead in their field service using the iot and ai solution they are continuously collecting data from those assets assets installed on their customer site sending that data collected data to the cloud continuously monitoring that data analyzing it learning from it and as soon as they detect an anomalous condition in data which could result into a future failure or downtime the uh, iot system automatically creates a proactive field service request in their service application assigns the appropriate field service engineer and equips him with all possible data about the machine health and machine operating uh, characteristics that have been collected uh, in, in the past few uh, days what to provide proactive service this this not only pleases their customers but also reduce their field service turns and again ultimately uh, the overall efficiency and uh, profitability 
imagine this all could never have been possible with the planned maintenance approach that most of the uh, oems uh, stick to so yes uh, in essence collecting data analyzing data uh, can have uh, can lead to uh, a lot of I insights and a uh, lot of efficiency improvements in in the uh, current processes that uh, manufacturers today have uh, next slide please Yeah, and I just want to close uh, uh, by uh, but just uh, you know pointing out to some of the uh, uh, clients where Hitachi is involved in doing this IoT and AI uh, projects or uh, proof of uh, value. Uh, Julia, uh, over to you. Thank you. Shami, thank you for taking us through these uh, use cases. Um, very interesting. If we move to the next slide, Kim, um, at this point, I would like to invite everybody to take the next step with us. You will find two links to the presentation uh, of um, uh, to Oracle customer uh, stories, how they use technology to transform their operations and, um, and, and their companies. And um, we would love to run a workshop session with you to identify how we can help you and how we can uh, move your manufacturing business from reactive to predictive. Also, we will have a great opportunity uh, to meet um, uh, to uh, Oracle's biggest event, um, Oracle's Open World. Uh, Kim, if you can go to the next slide, um, which is happening in September. And it would be a great <clears throat> uh, honor for us to see you all there. So at this um, point, the presentation is over, and we are ready to answer your questions. Um, I can see three questions already, but uh, please feel free to send more. Um, let me start with the ones that I see already. The first one is for John. Um, so John, what if we don't have sensors or we don't want to apply sensors to our equipment. Are there any other ways to leverage IoT technology? Uh, that's a great question. So yeah, there's um, there are um, interesting, so a lot of equipment probably has sensors that just aren't being utilized or leveraged. So that's of course one way to look back at that. But the second is there's a number of um, other um, ways of doing that. So there's a company, a partner that we work with who's just 3D signals and actually based the solution on uh, cloud solution that's actually available that looks at acoustic uh, monitoring. So it does acoustic monitoring. Um, it can identify basically sounds that create libraries. And from that, um, it can do some um, predictive capabilities and, and uh, enablement associated around that connectivity. And so it's uh, a number of different um, acoustical sounds where you can actually look up to six different devices and then monitor that um, acoustically and be able to act as similar to the, as though you had a, a, um, a connectivity to it. Awesome. Uh, thanks, John. The second question is for, for Julia, so I'll, I'll answer it. Uh, how accessible are these technologies to smaller companies with limited budget? Uh, great question. And in fact, the implications of everything we discussed today are especially exciting for smaller manufacturers because all of the, all of the ingredients for increased productivity have never been more accessible to them. And the number one reason is cloud computing, uh, because the, the total cost of ownership is significantly lower. Um, and, and since we have time, I will give a, a, a long answer here and explain the difference. Um, On-premise deployments have software licensing costs. They have yearly maintenance, hardware purchase and maintenance, and, and more expensive consulting costs. Cloud applications, um, the vendors, software as a service vendors, handle these challenges on their, on their end. So this uh, payment model, the subscription model, is very attractive to many companies uh, because instead of paying an upfront hardware cost and annual licensing fees, they pay as you go subscription fees. Um, so lower upfront capital cost, faster startup times for renting the software which is delivered through the internet. And cloud really enables manufacturers of, of all sizes to compete on a massive scale because uh, it is a scalable platform. So you can start small 
and incrementally add more pieces. Uh, and as you grow, this can support your growth. Um, also, uh, automatic updates make cloud systems very attractive to smaller manufacturers because with limited budget, um, they, they are up to the latest technology without having to do anything about it. It's uh, automated. And in fact, um, the first thing that I shared on the previous slide is uh, from a very small manufacturer, uh, Noble Plastics. They have, um, I think, 46 workers uh, and 16 robots. They and they run a complete, completely lights out third shift thanks to their investment uh, in IoT cloud technology. Uh, so this, uh, I think, it would be an interesting read, especially regarding small uh, companies. Um, so we have, uh, I see one more question uh, here. How should a manufacturer really start with an IoT or smart factory initiative? Are there guidelines on how to first start small and prove value? Chani, would you like to answer that? Yep, sure, Julia. Uh, great question. And, and the answer is yes, uh, certainly. Uh, and that's the way really to go about it, right? Start small. First, define uh, define your business outcomes that you really care about. Uh, what is that uh, uh, th that you really care about? What is your business priority? Is it about reducing wastage? Is it about reducing downtime or something else? Uh, then select the set of processes or the machines under those processes that 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 impact those uh, business outcomes that you care about start collecting data define your rules analyze that uh, data and start measuring the change in your business uh, outcomes so only when you are able to prove value uh, limiting the scope to a, a smaller set of processes on smaller set of machines uh, you can then uh, decide on uh, rolling out a similar or uh, an extrapolated version of the solution to the, your entire uh, factory uh, or you know the smart manufacturing initiative uh, that you are referring to in this question Hey, thanks, Shatni. Um, Kim, I don't see any other questions on my end. I don't know if you see anything or if you would like to to um, let us know how they can send the, their questions. Thanks. Um, so, so yeah. This is John. I actually see a few questions that are on here. So this one here, the first one asks, um, uh, what kind of bandwidth does a facility require to support IoT sensors, devices, and cloud? So I think that's an interesting one. I think the, the sensor, an individual sensor in and of itself doesn't really send that much data, so that's usually not the problem. The problem challenge potentially comes in when you have you know, thousands of sensors and, and lots of data. There's always going to be some um, data that will be um, stored at the source or, or you know, brought over more of a batch orientation, so you have to kind of define what elements that you want. So normally bandwidth, um, at least especially in starting out a project, isn't really going to be a problem. I think that's... Um, is something that will be developed over time. And of course, your network has to support it, just like you would have to support any other, you know, activity, um, you know, within a facility. And then um, she went on to ask another question, which I imagine is a follow-on: Is this specific to the Oracle IoT Cloud product? And um, the answer is no. Um, everything I think that was articulated today was agnostic. Of course, Oracle offers IoT products, and and I think um, uniquely what we try to do is offer IoT applications where we precede a lot of the the um, the requirements associated with particular uh, business functions all, all into an IoT um, application, which makes it easier, I think, for people to, to implement, to do things a little bit faster. And of course, we build everything and leverage it into the cloud, which also, I think, minimizes your cost um, and allows you to execute a little faster. However, everything that was described here was not intended to be unique um, to Oracle. Um, I think uh, there, there's a few other questions there. I'll go ahead and, and keep reading them, I guess. Um, are these um, IoT and AI capability um, come integrated with enterprise systems, or does it need to be a separate IT involvement to be bolted upon these ERP systems? Again, that's a, another great question. So with Oracle, um, you know, a lot of these will come seated with it, especially to our cloud um, ERP applications, various applications, including the service application. Um, we actually have IoT directly connected to our logistics um, application. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, others into the manufacturing, to service maintenance and other areas. So there's a whole realm of stuff that comes integrated. Um, and then the, the good thing, though, and I think this is really um, representative of most technologies that are released today, 
um, because they're all enabled you know with web services um, the connectivity is significantly easier than um, than others um, in the past now of course at the device level you still have to um, you know leverage the drivers associated with doing that but as it relates to coming back to the application um, it's um, it's, uh, it's pretty robust and pretty easy to integrate back into a variety of different applications. Um, there's a few more here. I guess I'll just answer them because it looks like they're related to Oracle again. And um, what are the Fusion uh, modules supported as of now for IoT? And I, I guess I just kind of answered that. Um, you know, the service module um, it is um, also uh, manufacturing and maintenance. Um, and then, as I mentioned, logistics um, is another one that is. Um, uh, that is uh, that is uh, that is supported, and um, and John, we have uh, time for one more before we wrap more. it up. Okay, I think uh, okay, great. I think there's one more. It says there are many wireless communications out in the market, and which communication will become the dominant player in IoT for manufacturing? Great question. Um, I can't say that I have an answer for that. I think. Um, you know, there's lots of, of different ones. Some of them will have more of a, um, a consumer orientation, um, and then I think we're seeing a lot of that, and that's being developed very quickly. Um, and then as it relates to manufacturing, I'm not quite sure um, I can answer. The, the key will be a, a lot more industrial um, activities, as our rule will be, as, especially as it relates to IoT connecting we engage, um, you know, we'll support a multitude of standards um, until that gets fair to top. That's it. Thank you. Well, thank you, and that's all the time we have for today. Um, I'd, on behalf of ASCM, I'd like to thank our presenters for their time today and all of our attendees for participating in this ASCM vendor webcast. And as a reminder, this presentation will be available on the Oracle website in the near future, and you'll all receive an email once the recording is available. All content and materials included in this edition of the ASCM Vendor Webcast are the property of ASCM, Oracle, and Hitachi and are protected by the United States and international copyright laws. All rights are reserved.